Screamer, and welcome to Scream Stream, your weekly guide to digital horror entertainment. I'm James Gass. If you're new to the show, what I do is I review a horror movie from one of the various streaming services, spoiler free. I also cover horror news, video games, and new releases of the week. And this week is part two of Scary Christmas right here on Scream Stream. So I am going to be reviewing a Christmas themed horror film. Now, last week I know I said that I was going to be doing a Christmas film along with a regular film, but I feel like that that got a little overcomplicated. I want to keep things simple, so I'm just going to do a horror film this week. And this week's film is going to be a Christmas horror story from 2015. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to talk about a little uh, some updates on what's been going on with me. Uh, first off, if you are into horror merchandise, you may have heard of a small company called Fright Rags, and they sell like horror t-shirts with different horror-themed characters on the shirts, and I ordered my first couple of shirts during their Black Friday sale. I got two shirts for $36, that's with shipping, so it wasn't too bad, and I have to say the quality of these shirts are really, really good. Uh, now, they not it's not a sponsor or anything. I just want to let you know that uh, if you've seen these shirts and you're not real sure if, if the quality is good on them, they are some really high-quality shirts. I love them. They fit really well. So it's not like if you get a large, uh, sometimes it's hard to tell. Or like, you know, sometimes a large uh, fits a little smaller or or sometimes a large can fit a little bigger. You never really know. But I got a large, and it fits really well. It fits like a large should. Uh, but really good stuff. The artwork used on these shirts is freaking amazing. And that's fright-rags.com. Check them out. Uh, they got a lot of cool stuff up there. And when they sell out of a shirt, it's it's gone. So if there's something really cool up there, like they had the series of, uh, or they had uh, some Halloween shirts. And there was one shirt that just looked really, really cool. The d design was was awesome, but they sold out, and there's no more left. So if you see something really cool, go ahead and grab it. But yeah, really cool company, really cool shirts. Check them out, fright-rags.com. Also, this past Thursday, Scream Factory announced that they their license for Terror Train starring Jamie Lee Curtis uh, expired. And their Blu-ray distribution is now, or the Blu-ray DVDs that they made are now out of print. So uh, as soon as I saw that announcement, I went on to Amazon and they were selling them for thirteen thirty-nine. I bought one. Like an hour later, they're completely sold out. And now on eBay, if you go on eBay, they have a couple of copies that are selling. One is selling right now for $38. One selling for $40. But on Amazon, you can buy them now from third parties starting between $60 and $80. So as soon as they announced that that DVD ran out of print, Amazon sold out. And now you can buy them from third party sellers for a ridiculous amount of money. But thankfully, I got mine for just over 13 bucks. I might resell that in a few months. I don't know. We'll see how the price goes. But if you did manage to get it, it's a great movie. So maybe I'll just hold on to it. And they even said on their Facebook page that they don't have any left in their warehouse. So Amazon won't be getting any more. And uh, I talked with a couple of people on Twitter. Uh, Target Online was sold out. Best Buy is sold out. Uh, every, I, I guess everybody else is sold out too. So uh, price has skyrocketed within the past few days, which is crazy. I've never really seen anything like that. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So let's get into the movie review. And as I stated earlier, this is a Christmas horror story from 2015. It currently has a 5.7 on IMDb. It was written by Jason Villatralt, James Key, Sarah Larson, Doug Taylor, and Pascal Trottier. And was directed by Grant Harvey, Stephen Hoban, and Brett Sullivan. And it stars William Shatner, George Bouza, Ar Rob Archer, Zoe de Grand Maison, Mason, <clears throat> Alex Azarov, Shannon Cook, Amy Forsyth, Jeff Clark, and a bunch of other folks. And for a brief plot synopsis, interwoven stories that take place on Christmas Eve as told by one festive radio, f radio host 
a family brings home more than a Christmas tree, a student documentary becomes a living nightmare, a Christmas spirit terrorizes, and Santa slays evil. It's an anthology film that sort of, it's almost like trick or treat in the sense that you don't have just one segment, wraparound story, one segment, wraparound story, one segment. It kind of cuts back and forth between each of the the stories. And the wraparound story is not really a story. It's just William Shatner and this radio station indirectly telling you what's coming up. And it's funny because, of course, you, you can't have a psychic radio host. So you have to subtly tell the audience what's happening in the, in the coming segment. I thought it was really interesting. It's just a really fun movie to watch. And somebody else wrote on, on IMDb, um, high, like one of the stories, uh, high school students investigate a mysterious homicide that occurred at the prior holiday season at their school. And they basically go to investigate this thing. And it was supposedly recorded by a cop who is also part of another story. And there's like some supernatural thing that happened at school. And these kids go to investigate it. The cop, I guess, got traumatized and had to take some time off. And so now he's trying to work his way back into his wife and, and child's lives. And now on Christmas Eve, they're going to go get a Christmas tree. And instead of going to a legal lot to buy a tree, they decide to hop a fence and go cut down somebody else's tree, which is a really bad idea. And they happen to pass a family going on vacation to this guy's aunt's house. So he's never really, he hasn't seen her in a long time and apparently she's really rich and they're going basically there to ask for some money uh, and this is where they kind of find out the story about Krampus and the girl in the family is dating one of the kids who goes to the uh, high school to investigate the murder that happened in the pre previous Christmas Eve now none of that is spoiler I promise that's all just the basic premise of what's happening and how they're kind of all interconnected and then you have William Shatner who actually does a really good job for somebody who who all he does is sit in a radio station and talk into a microphone does a really good job at tying all these stories together and I thought the stories were actually really interesting they're well written well acted and I have to tell you that I saw this when I saw this movie come out uh, there was some sort of controversy with the cover art at Walmart. And I thought, you know, I'm probably never going to watch this movie anyway. So I'm not really going to care too much about that. I'm not going to get all fussy about it like some folks would. And the cover art actually looks pretty cheesy. So I never actually bothered to watch it. And sadly, I wish I had seen this back when it first came out. Because this film is actually really good. And it's a whole lot of fun to watch. I gave it a, a 7 on IMDb. And I'm surprised it, it's only at a 5.7. I love this movie. I thought it was great. Is, is it perfect by any means? No, it's not. Uh, and you know, some of the thumbnails, the photos on IMDb. Like you see an image of Krampus fighting Santa Claus, it looks really cheesy, but it's actually not. I wish they had done a better cover story or cover story, cover art to, you know, reel me in a little more. Cause like I said, it, it looks goofy and it looks cheesy from the cover, but it is such a great movie. It's a whole lot of fun to watch. I love this one. Uh, this is probably like one of my top favorite Christmas horror movies now. And I saw this one on Netflix, and it's been on Netflix for, I think it's been on Netflix since last year, I believe. But if you want to watch it, it is there. I highly recommend this one. It's so much fun. And, I mean, you're combining two things I love, horror and Christmas. And I do love me some Christmas. And I think that's why I kind of want to just focus on Christmas horror this month. Because it is December and Christmas, I think, is like, this is like my second favorite time of the year next to Halloween. And I've always loved Christmas as a kid. And then when somebody just combines something else that I love, horror, and combines it with Christmas and does a good job at it, I have to celebrate that. So that's why I'm just, I just want to focus on one film each week or one Christmas horror movie each week. 
of this month. Next week, I think we're going to do Christmas Evil from 1980. Uh, I've never actually heard of this movie. I saw it on Shudder, and that's the first time I've even heard of it. I never knew this one existed, uh, and it's, I, I guess it's a slasher film. It looks pretty interesting, uh, so we'll give it a shot. You know, last week I did Black Christmas, which I actually found out. There's a group here in South Florida uh, right near uh, Lake Worth where I go to work, and what they do is... They'll uh, show have showings of of classic horror films at the at the theater down there. And this past Friday, they did Black Christmas, and they showed it. Uh, I think it was at like nine thirty at one night, and tickets were like ten bucks a piece. I didn't get to go because I found out about it too late. Uh, but in January, they're going to be doing a four K showing of night of the living the original night of the living dead i'm really excited about that that's gonna be like close to my birthday i think uh, in january maybe i can get my wife to go with me that'd be pretty cool to go see that in 4k in the theater if i'm able to go to that but yeah next week it's gonna be christmas evil all right moving on to news not a whole lot this week but there's a couple things i do want to talk about uh uli lomel uh passed away from heart failure he was 72 he directed, wrote and directed The Boogeyman from 1980. And I think this is probably like one of his most famous films. And this was one of the films, one of the first films to get on the UK's video nasty list. So it got banned from the UK and, and taken out of video stores during raids and all kinds of crazy stuff. I watched a documentary about that whole thing. Really interesting what happened with the government and censorship in the UK during the during the uh, early 80s. But he also did a film called The BTK Killer, which was a biopic. Uh, He did uh, Black Dahlia, Green River Killer, which was pretty good. So it is sad to to hear about about his passing. Uh, Moving on, John Carpenter approves uh, Escape from New York remake script by Neil Cross. And this is going to be produced by Blumhouse. Robert Rodriguez is attached to direct which sounds promising because I like his films. He's done some really cool, really interesting films. Uh, I like his work. And, you know, this kind of seems like a Robert Rodriguez movie. Uh, I don't know who's going to, well, they don't have any you know stars or anything like that, but the script's gotten approved from uh, John Carpenter. And if he likes it, you know, that's a, that's a huge thing. Because I know he did not like Rob Zombie's uh, Halloween remake. I liked it, though. Uh, And moving on, Neil Marshall's Hellboy reboot, starring David Harbour, gets a release date. Uh, And you know, David Harbour is going to be playing Hellboy. And he was the sheriff on Stranger Things. And this should be out on January 11th, 2019. So it's still a ways away. Uh, but they have released some images, and I have to say, Hellboy looks, this version of Hellboy looks just like Ron Perlman as Hellboy. And, and I think <laughs> I think since they couldn't really do a, another Ron Perlman Hellboy, they had to make, they made him look as close to Ron Perlman's Hellboy as possible. It's really weird. I mean, it looks just like Ron Perlman as Hellboy. It's it's so strange. But anyway, um, this film is supposed to be darker. It's supposed to be more of a monster movie. Uh, So I'm kind of excited to see it. I feel like they're going to do something good with it. I hope. Uh, Scream Factory releases uh, cover art, release date, and details for their The Strangers Blu-ray. And this is going to be out on March the 9th. And if you haven't seen The Strangers, oh, well, let me say this. This is the two-disc 10th anniversary, and the cover art looks really, really good. Scream Factory does amazing Blu-rays, uh, especially with not just the transfers, but also like all the special features and stuff like that. They do a really, really good job. Uh, I'm excited for this. If you haven't seen The Strangers, you need to watch this movie. It is one of like my top, I'd say it's, it's in my top 10 horror films of, of all time. Uh, it was just absolutely terrifying film. Uh, so that is going to get a release date on March the 9th. And then also just coming in, 
Uh, they are going to be releasing the Burbs on Blu-ray through the Shout Factory Select line. And there's not a whole lot of details on this one, uh, but it's going to be, it's or it's pre-selling for $29.99. It'll be out on March the 20th of next year. Uh, I am probably going to pre-order this because the Burbs is my top two favorite film of all time. Number one being The Goonies. Uh, so I'm going to be pre-ordering this, this movie. Um, I am so excited for this because knowing shout factory, they're going to put some really, really cool special features on this one. Uh, I'm super excited. Like I'm so stoked for this movie. You have no idea. Uh, and I mean, it's the burbs. If you haven't watched the burbs, you got to watch it. You can rent it. I'm sure you can rent it on Amazon. Um, and it, I think it's pretty cheap. And every now and then Netflix will get it, but I don't think they have that anymore. Yeah, it's not available on Netflix to stream, but you can rent it on Amazon for two ninety nine, and it's totally worth a rental. Uh, so let's move on to some new releases, and I kind of want to do start doing some physical releases because I know you might actually like physical release. I do. I, I like getting Blu rays and stuff because I like having special features, especially. Uh, but Screen Factory released Silent Night, Deadly Night on Blu ray. They have a ton of features on this disc uh, from commentaries, interviews, outtakes. Uh, there is a 4K transfer. They also have the original uncut version on there. Uh, tons of features on this one. I am so excited. I, uh, but that is on sale. You can get it on Amazon for like $17. Uh, Twin Peaks Season 3. This is a new season of Twin Peaks that aired on Showtime. Uh, I haven't seen this yet. I really want to watch it. I love the original show. Uh, Better Watch Out is brand new out on DVD as well as Shudder. It's, it's streaming exclusively on Shudder, but I, I think you can rent it on Amazon Prime or you can rent it from Amazon. Uh, but if you want to watch it without having to pay extra for it, it's on Shudder. It has the two kids from The Visit in it, and it's kind of like a horror version of Home Alone is what I've heard. That I will be reviewing that one this month too, uh, probably a week after next. I'm going to be reviewing that one. Uh, Howard Lovecraft and the Undersea Kingdom is out from, or is out on Blu ray. And I think this one's from Arrow. Uh, the Witch Who Came from the Sea is out, and that's also on Arrow, I believe. Malatesta's Carnival of Blood is out on DVD. The Crucifixion and Dementia 13, which is a remake, uh, that's also on Blu ray. Now, moving on to streaming films on Amazon Prime, One Dark Night from the 80s is out. And I don't know if, if this, uh, it says newly released, uh, but I know it's been on there for at least a week or so. So I'm not exactly how sure or how new it, it really is, because there, there's no website that tells me, here's all the new stuff on Amazon Prime this week. But I did see Child's Play. That's on there, the original Child's Play. And I think... I'm pretty sure that's new because I haven't seen that on Amazon Prime and it just showed up one day. So I'm pretty sure that's new to stream. And then on Shudder, we have uh, Better Watch Out, as I mentioned, The Passion of Darkly Noon. This is an interesting looking film and it has Brandon Fraser and Viggo Mortensen. It, it sounds kind of interesting and I do want to watch it. It's got some good ratings on uh, on Shudder. I think the worst rating is like a two star, but most of them are, most of them seem to be pretty positive. I do want to check this one out. It looks really interesting. And then we also have Killers, which uh, it looks like an Asian film. And then on Netflix we have Temple, which I started to watch. I haven't finished. Uh, it, it looks interesting, but it's gotten some pretty mixed reviews, and, and I'm not really sure how to take that, but. I'll watch that one and see how it is. And maybe I'll review that in February or in January. Because it looks like it might remind me of The Forest. And if you haven't seen that, I like that one a lot. And that one also has gotten some mixed reviews. But I liked it. And, and so hopefully the temple is pretty good. It looked good from the trailer. So that is going to do it for this episode of Scream Stream. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. And if you'd like to keep up with me outside of the podcast, you can do so at screenpod.com. 
com, where you can find links to all of my social profiles, subscribe to the podcast via your favorite podcatcher, and get the show notes for each episode. I do want to let you know that ScreamStream is listener supported, and you can support the podcast through Patreon over at patreon.com slash ScreamStream. You can donate as little or as much as you like each month, but if you give at least a dollar or more, you'll get the original ScreamStream podcast that ran from 2014 to 2015 a week early, and you'll also get the -the behind-the-scenes podcast, When the Screaming Stops. Uh, And basically what that is is... um. I talk about, you know, my process of doing the podcast and then I also talk about some other personal things. Uh, I'll talk about uh, my history with horror, with the genre, with books and um, all kinds of sort of topical episodes. So uh, that is a patron exclusive podcast that will not be released to the public. Um, But if you are a patron, you'll get a private RSS feed that you can plug into any podcast app and you'll get all of my content. You'll get uh, these episodes as well as the original episodes and the behind the scenes podcast all in one feed. And finally, the easiest way to support ScreamStream is to share the podcast with the horror fanatics in your life and help grow the ScreamStream community. Share it on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, or wherever you do most of your social media. Share ScreamPod.com in as many places as you can. Help me get the show out there because I really want to build the audience and I kind of want to build this community around what I think is a really good podcast. So until next week, I'm James Gass saying, if it was real, the cameraman would be dead too. Good night. Good night.